this is Engineer Victor Babuchi. I'll be handling you today on CV 201, Strength of Materials. And our topic for today is Types of Beams. For Malayan Objectives, we are going to be defining what beam is as used in engineering. We're going to be talking about types of beams. We'll discuss the applications. We're going to be sketching the types as well as their free body diagrams. And um, from learning outcomes, at the end of this class, you are expected to be able to describe a beam as we use in engineering. You should be able to explain different types of beams, discuss the applications, and sketch different beams and their free body diagrams. So let's get into let's get into today's business definition. A beam is a structural element that resists lateral loads, or you can say structural element that primarily resists loads applied laterally to the axis of the beam. Now, if you look at this diagram here, we have a simply supported beam and this one is showing you UDL, uniform dissipated load that is applied that laterally on the beam and this one led to what sagging okay the bending is what we call sagging here okay. so this beam is, is the terminate beam that is bending under uniformly distributed loads before we move further we need to understand what we call reactions and supports. Now, let me ask you a question. Supposing you have a block, or yes, a block, and you now drop it on the ground or on the table. What do you think will happen to the table or the ground? There will be call reactions according to Newton's second third law of motions. Actions and reactions are equal and opposite. So, looking at the figure two. We have a block this way that has mass m okay multiplied by acceleration i have it then due to the weight of this block that's what they call reactions the reaction is pranking up okay as a result of this weight so anytime there's a load on a beam the beam will also exert what they call reactions so we need to get that and then the support we have in engineering making is we have roller pin and the fixed supports. Okay, so when the when the beam is loaded, this support produces reactions to resist the weight, depending on the type of support. This allow or prevent a moment horizontal reaction or both. So, having understood what we mean by load and the reactions, let's move on to the next slide. Now we have beam supports. Now we want to look at it in details. Now look at the first one. We have pin supports. This is pin supports. For pin supports, the reactions that we are expecting here, vertical reactions, horizontal reaction. What it means is that there is vertical restraint. There is also horizontal what restraint. So when we use pin support, the free body diagram will look this way. We have horizontal reaction, we have vertical reaction. And when we have roller supports, as this case shown here, we are going to have only vertical restraint. For the free body diagram, we are having something like this. We are having something like this. The third one is fixed supports. When the beam is fixed or we are is inbuilt, okay, just like what we have when you are dealing with beams in, in normal structures we have this case here and then here there is what they call vertical restraint horizontal restraint and there is restraint rotationally if you try to describe the free body diagram it will look this way vertical reactions horizontal reactions and then there is moment if you couple this uh, okay let's if you couple one and two like if you have simply supported beam, as in this case here, you 
you are free wire diagram will now look this way remember this is pin support this is what rural support then at pin end we have horizontal reaction we have vertical reaction at roller end we have what vertical reaction i hope you're understanding this because this is the basics of what you are going to be learning in this topic let's move on okay so when the sum of the forces acting on the beam can produce say shear force of any moment okay which in turn generate what they call internal stresses or strain or deflection we we'll understand this in details as we move on types of beam now in engineering there are the several ways of classifying beam but then we are classifying them based on the supports we just talked about we want to learn about support now so we are classifying this beam based on what support the first one we're going to look at is simply supported beam fixed beam or fixed ended beam overhanging beam double overhanging beam continuous beam cantilever beam propped cantilever beam so we're looking at these beams we look at their diagrams look at how you sketch them and then look at how look at their freeboard diagram so the first one here is simply supported beam um, it's a beam that has pin support at one end and ruler support at the other end and for cantilever beam one end is fixed and the other end is what is free then for the fixed ended beam or fixed beam it means that both ends are what fixed as we have in here so there is what they call vertical restraint, horizontal restraint, and the moment restraint. So there's no rotation of this kind of beam. So the, the fourth one is a uh, overhanging beam. So when you have a beam extending beyond the supports, from this diagram, we have pin support, we have a roller support. However, this beam extends beyond the supports. And when this happens, we call it what? Overhanging beam. I hope you're understanding what we are doing. The next one we have here is propped cantilever. Propped cantilever beam. From this one, one end is what? Fixed. The other end is pinned. That is, it has pin support. A beam of this form is termed propped cantilever. Propped cantilever. The next one is continuous beam. When we have more than one support, as this case in a figure in uh, six, we we'll have more than one support. Here we we'll have pin support, roller support, and roller support. So when you have more than one support, you call it continuous. It can be more than three. As the case may be so this is showing us what an example of continuous beam so next is what they call double overhanging i know by now you understand what they call um, overhanging beam we said about them for let's refresh overhanging beam um it's all about a beam that extends beyond the support now they say double overhanging beam can you crack that so what comes to your mind when they say double overhanging beam? Okay, why you think about it? When you have double overhanging beam, it means that the beam, the two ends, extends beyond the supports. For instance, if you have, figure out when you have a semi supported beam and the two ends are now extending beyond the supports, such a scenario is called double overhanging beam now if you understand this very 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 well i believe you can do free body diagram for each of these beams can you try it now okay and that will take us to what we call ss axis number one what do you understand by a beam from engineering context you need to give me accurate definition of beam in your own terms and uh, you need to give you need to differentiate between 
continuous beam and overhanging beam. Okay, differentiate between these two. The next thing you will be doing is you're going to produce sketches for any five types of beams. As any of the beams they want to sketch, we need you to sketch the free body diagrams using your knowledge from supports. Support, pin support, roller, fixed ended beam. So if you use these supports, you now know how to come up with your sketch for any of the beams that we've described so far. So I would like you to do five and uh, you show us in the next class. Okay? I do hope that what we've learned here is interesting. If you have questions, please note it. In the next class, you can ask them. Okay? Bye. And have a nice day.